All right, welcome back again to another episode of the Live Your Dreams podcast. I'm your host, Joe Wallace, alongside my fantastic co-host. Chris Victor. Chris, talk about an amazing day. Oh, yes. Not only are we in beautiful Manhattan, but we have on two incredible individuals with us, two legends of the stage and screen. Talk about these Playhouse 90, yes. the wonder years. I know. We have on Patty McCormick and Dan Loria. Thank you so much for coming to the Live Your Dreams podcast. Oh, thanks for having us. Yeah. He's Pleasure so to be here. Isn't he? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm so positive. Yes. As That's you guys, crazy. really, we're yes. sitting here with legends. I mean, it makes us feel so good, really. We're in awe of your bodies of work. And to take the yes. time to come on to our show, really, it brings us nothing but positive vibes. So thank you so much for yes. coming on. Thank you so much thank for you. having us. Yeah. Appreciate it. Promoting the theater, keeping us keeping live theater alive. Yeah. I love this theater. It's a great play. location. I can't wait to come back to see your play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Theater 555, Eric Krebs, who, who used to run the John Hausman and Douglas Fairbanks. You know, he'd been involved with great plays like, you know, Driving Miss Daisy, Fool for Love. Mm. Uh, this is his theater, and he has a hit in here now, five, you know, it's selling out. Yeah. But hopefully when that's over, uh, Eric and I will be producing a play that I wrote, Just Another Day, starring Patty McCormick. And Dan Loria. <laughs> and uh, we're looking forward. That's our next project. Yes. So she's actually off book already. Look at Patty. Yeah. Well, we've we worked hard on that. Yeah. There's a lot of language. A lot of language. It's, it's about a words. Two, two-hander, yeah. as they say, two people, and uh, and they're and they're writers. And she was uh, a writer, so and a poet, and a poet, yeah. and has a, a way with words, which yeah. uh, it stepped up my she, vocabulary considerably. <laughs> yeah, her, her lexical <laughs> treasury has increased. Yeah, you know? there you so, go. So, but it's about two comedy writers <laughs> with dementia, and each day they meet, and they write comedy, and they fall in love. And that's, that's basically the play, but it's, I don't know how you can do an upper about something like dementia, memory loss, but this play is, it's a lot of laughs. It's There's just, some tears. What you always say too is about um, that the creativity that they share each day um, is what uh, keeps them going. Yeah. Sure, sure. It's, so the it's, creative, it's a lifeline. Yeah, the so. creative spirit never dies. Yeah. Regardless of what. Isn't that's that really wild? what it's about. So when you have that purpose, it, that's the driving yeah. force. Yeah. And you said that you did this play already somewhere else before we here. We did it in Ellenville, New York. I did it with Patty, and uh, we got rave reviews at the Albany uh, papers. And then I did it in the Berkshires with Jody Long, and we got a rave review from the Boston Globe and a few other local papers. So Eric said, let's bring it here. Yep. And we were, we were actually going to be uh, rehearsing right now, I know. but there's a hit. And, yeah, you know, thank God. We would always wish a yeah. good for all plays. So, but when it's over, we'll probably go up. Yeah. No, no, that that's right. fantastic. And and talking about the creative process for our guests that are watching that don't know, Dan, when you come up with an idea like this before you approach somebody like Patty, what's the process you go through for creating a play like this? How does Dan Loria come up with an idea like this? Where do you draw your motivation from? Well, th there's no one answer for that. If you had ten writers, everybody would have a different approach. But with me. Um, I am not a writer who acts, I'm an actor who writes. So <laughs> I actually like rewriting. So what I do is, it, it takes me one week to write the first draft and two years before I show it to anybody because <laughs> I rewrite and rewrite. But then I have people like Patty come over and we sit and we around a table, we read it. And I like the, the suggestions from the actors. And I try to put them in. And sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, but you got to yeah. play with it. Sure. Yeah. You know, but a lot of writers I know, they write with a chisel and cement, yeah. you know, and you, For, that's hard. I always say too about this play that um, uh, the, the fact that different women have played this role sure. and yet the reviews have been so positive, it says a lot about the writing, the structure of the play. And so, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to us yeah, getting yeah. to do it again. And we had a, we did a yeah. reading at uh, New Jersey Rep, and there was a Q&A after. I mean, the reviews are the reviews. Thank God they were good. But uh, some woman, uh, she was in her 40s, and she said at the q and I'm going through this with my mother right now. Thank you for not making them stupid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, yes. to me, mm -hmm. was better than any review we had. Yeah. I love your process, your creative process, where it doesn't end like chiseled into stone, where you actually work with the actors and you come up with something new. It's constantly evolving. Oh, I've worked with some, I only do new plays, and I've worked on some where 
you can see it's just so obvious that if you just do this or cut that, you know, you have a better play, but they won't do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> you got to beat them. You know? most, so. most writers don't want to cut a word. I know. Yeah. I know. He's willing. Yeah. <laughs> that must feel great as an actress, Patty, when you're working with a writer like that yeah. that's open to collaboration, open to cutting words. How do you feel when you go to pick your scripts or a, a play? Somebody comes up to you and approaches you and says, Patty, I want you to read this. I want you to come on board. Yeah. What's your process of saying yes? Oh, boy. There has to be something in it that I, I would say hook into. You know, it could be the littlest thing, but knowing that I would look forward to doing that you know, in it. Yes. But if you can't find anything you think you can really make come alive, um, it's always a better idea to pass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but she hardly ever, she's so she courageous. Yeah, she's so courageous. She's just usually just, yeah, I'll do it. You know, but I'll you got to remember, shot. she That's started, what... she's she's one of very few people you're ever going to meet who did live television. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she sure. she literally wow. was were rehearsing during the day, all day, for a show that was live on Friday night. But after rehearsal, we'd get in a cab and go do the Broadway production of The Bad Seat. Yeah. And on Friday night, they started to play later because she had a dress in the cab to get there. Get there. Isn't that weird? That's incredible. And my poor understudy used to wait in the wings, you know, just shit, not wanting to go on. Because we were, <laughs> we were kids. It wasn't like we were ambitious, you yeah. know what I mean? We were the kids. It's all resourceful, and you're showing that right there. <laughs> <laughs> Are, are you kidding me? Look at that. I mean, that is what of the world, but legendary. People don't get to do that anymore. Like you said, it's a whole yeah. lost art form of it what is. you were able and to do. And it was live. When they were doing it, it was in your yeah. living room. Yeah. Sets would fall. Cameras yeah. would break. Right. And then, it, and then every once in a Thanks. while, a camera would swing over and a lady would sell you a refrigerator. <laughs> there was no cuts. There was no tape to the commercial. On I Remember Mama, she used to do the Maxwell House coffee commercials as her character. Oh, wow. And it was Peggy Wood, mm. who was a big name in the history of Lights theater. Out, yeah. And, um, yeah, and she would, you know, move from the set where she was in the scene. And then she'd move over and say, you know, something delicious about the coffee, you know. And, that, that was, was so part, common. Talk about product placement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they and there was a big thing I think in the union later about actors uh, maybe perhaps doing that again. Mm. Oh, was that what had never happened? Yeah. And I, I yeah, when I, I thought I've been around that. so long, I remember when it was just acceptable. Yeah, you know, I thought. And now you have to so vote long, on it. You're new again. I'm new. <laughs> well, the, you you, yeah. you work in that type of environment, and then you go on years later to do great shows like The Sopranos. You're on a lot of seasons of The yeah. Sopranos. Yeah. How was it then jumping from that type of live television then being on that type of show? I mean, yeah. what a difference in probably production and how that whole process works. Oh, really different. And sure. uh, I, I most comfortable in the process where you, you know, you have a reading and then you rehearse and then you do the thing. <laughs> Today, it's a different uh, skill because you have to show up knowing your lines and uh, having a, a conceived thing, preconceived, really, of what you're going to do unless somebody changes it. Sure. But, uh, and I w much enjoy the thing where it grows. Sure. I, I just, old style, you know, I, yeah, I miss that. Character, developing yeah. a character and sustaining it. Instead you know, of showing up. One line at a time, over yeah. and over and over. Yeah, again. you can do that. That's yeah. it. it. I guess that's an advantage for. Who? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who. It's not, a, it's not an Somebody advantage. Somebody who didn't learn their lines. It... Right. <laughs> it's not an advantage for the talented. It's only an advantage for the least talented. Huh. If I say, hello, how are you? And you say, I'm fine. And we yeah. shoot it with 10 different angles. Yeah. We cut from my third take to your 15th take. I know. It has that's, to be good. That's so horrible. Because you have a reaction sometimes, mm -hmm. and you know where it came. And, and, then you and it's it. not there. It's somewhere else. Yep. It's like, oh, my God, I didn't make that face then. Yeah. And, you know we're, even, <laughs> and we're... We're so old yeah. that uh, we remember we're doing episodic television where they did three or four minute scenes without a cut on episodic. Wow. I mean, I did Cagney and Lacey with Ty and Daly. We had, especially when Jackie Cooper directed, you know, the old uh, uh, movie star, he would, oh, here's my two horses. And we'd go through it and they would shoot it in one. And then he would do what they call a cat in a window. Ooh. He would say, we're on this stage. 
he would shoot the four of us on one and then maybe cut to the camera or cut to the light booth. And then that was the cat in the window. So if we did it four times and he wanted to use the beginning of number one, but mm. the second half of number three, you cut to the cat in the window. Mm. You didn't cut on every line or anything sure. like that. Also, it makes such a difference when you're doing a scene with somebody and you can actually interrupt them or you touch Overlap. them and something happens to them that makes something happen to you, but you don't get all that in separate shots. Sure. Yeah. You know? it, it feels very manufactured now. It's almost yeah. become obviously an editor's medium at this yeah. point as opposed to an actor's medium. Do you feel that's somewhat similar to that? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and I, I just think the not only the quality, it, it just takes no talent. And I think it reflects in the written word. I mean, where almost every other show starts with a mutilated body and how did it get here? And it's cut, 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 cut. So instead of having We're plays and movies and Playhouse 90s on television for people to see that the purpose is to the writer, like a Rod Serling or Patty Chayefsky, they were trying to stimulate thought. Mm. Now we're not. We're just trying to get reaction. Cut, mm. cut, cut, cut. Yeah. But not thought. You know, it's and that's funny. why the theater is so important. It's the last play for the last place where a writer can e express thought. Say when you when you mention you know live TV, I think of Jackie Gleason and the, the greats that were able to do it live. Who were your mentors back then at the time? Because I have mentors now, current day, but live TV, I have no reference. Yeah. Except oh. Jackie. Well, you I had with movie some great directors too, though. I I they did. They must have motivated Ar Frank Ar and I'm Arthur Penn. Um, who was the wonderful one? Uh, oh, oh, I do this Delbert all the Mann. time. Yes, a lot of them. Lot of them. So many. Yeah. And then Ralph later Nelson. on, I had the pleasure of uh, Ron Howard. Yeah. Who, what? who? We were children at the same time, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, she was, he was great. Uh, he was old, kind Nixon, of old stuff. In, in Nixon. Oh, oh yes, yeah. yes, yep, absolutely. Um, but anyway, but my, um, I had movie stars that I liked, not particularly TV people. Sure. And um, uh, so I think... Well, you got to mention, you got to talk about it. Her, her <laughs> dearest friend was like her mother, was Marsha Hunt. Yeah. Who was one of the great film noir stars and From just one of our great actresses who actually was blacklisted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then came to Broadway, won a Tony, and then left everything to become the head of UNICEF. She was the first celebrity. That was... Yeah. Wow. Like her she was Angelina Jolie before Angel Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie, yeah. Exactly right. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, her name was Marsha Hunt. And she only passed about a year ago. Hundred and five. Wow. Yeah. So she had a good long life. Sure. Um, she was lovely. And if you look at, you know, movies from the, I think, Paramount in the 30s and then the 40s and the 50s, you know, she... Yeah. Uh, and it was nice it, it was great knowing people like that. You know, uh, my mentor was Charles Durning and Jack Klugman, you know, hanging out with them and go to dinner all the time with Charlie and Jack, Peter Falk and Dom DeLuise. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I would bring uh, a young writer a lot of times just to hear the same stories over and over again. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, Jack, tell her about uh, when you uh, when you and... Uh, John Garfield ran into Lee Jacob and Jack, oh, you really want, I don't want it to, all right, I'll tell you. And then you would tell it and you'd get to hear it again, you know, and, and they were great stories and it was a different time. Yeah. I don't know, we're into factory work again. Yeah, no, that, that's definitely what it seems like. Dan, you talked about a different time. Now we're coming into a whole new culture. There's influencer cultures getting out there. A lot of people that are coming on shows are stars from TikTok and Instagram, and they're becoming the actors. How do you feel it's kind of got to morph our craft, the both of you? Because we're leading from the real actor into an influencer culture now. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, well, good. You want to go first? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Well, I, I think the biggest reflection of what you're talking about is if you look at our colleges, even in the year 2000, look how many had a theater department. Yes. Now every one of them, 90% of them now say communications department. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. young people are coming out having made 10 minute movies and have never sustained a character for a length of a play. Yeah. You know, and that is affecting the theater. We, we uh, 90% of the stars that Patty knew that I work with all started in the theater. Yeah. Now it's 10% are starting in the theater. 
and 90% are or will, are or will be coming from TikTok and all that other stuff. <laughs> and that, again, hurts the talented. It doesn't hurt the least talented. I can edit any performance. You do something, you give me a line 10 times, one of them's going to work. <laughs> and if it doesn't, you know what I'll do? I'll show the other person. Sure. And you'll just hear the line. <laughs> but they don't know. That happens you know, they, so often. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah, no, it absolutely, absolutely you know, does. Well, you hear, you hear, you watching somebody else's face, and you hear a voice in the back, <laughs> so that yes. you know what. And you try to talk to the young people about how detrimental self tapes are. They don't know what you're talking about. They don't know what it is to be in the room. I, I, I hated it with our latest contract. I don't mind if I got a self tape. Fine, I don't mind doing that. But why make thirty of us at our level in this business what our body of work self-tape and then offer it to an actor who didn't self-tape that's right. so insulting yeah and the last three i lost the three actors that were given the role were great actors yeah and i admire a director who says hey i want to work with him or her again sure. i respect that but why did you make us. 30 of us Self-tape. You yeah. can look at our reel. It's backup. We're backup. Back, yeah, but you got our reel, our disc. You don't need us to look like it. And how How does now, now take a young person. How do they separate themselves from the group when they audition? If everybody has the same background, everybody has the same. I know. And uh, uh, Pat McCorkle, a great casting director, she loves telling the story. Uh, her job as a casting director was to see a lot of actors narrow it down, and then have them come for a callback. And at the callback, there would be the director, the writer, and at least one producer. Mm -hmm. And her job at that point, at the callback, was to be the actor's agent in the room. Sweet. Patty would leave and say, okay, the next person you're going to see is Dan Loria. Mm -hmm. She said, I can't tell you how many times I would actually say to them, I know this is not what you want, but I want you to see this actor because I know what's coming up. Sure. So it's and they were actors, allies. Yes. <laughs> now they yeah. just submitting a reel that they haven't looked at to somebody who's going to eliminate the day before they have to pick somebody, all the blondes, anybody over six. Yeah. It's all, and it's not acting. Matter of fact, Pat loves telling stories. She said, I saw Dan Laurier play Al Capone off Broadway, and I brought him in as a gangster. And in the middle of the audition, her phone rang on her desk, and I grabbed it and went, not now! And I slammed it down, and I went on. She goes, we were afraid not to hire him. <laughs> and that's how I got to know her. But you can't do that on a tape. And then they are so proficient at yeah. putting music and cutting, and, and then they get on a set, and they're lost. Yes. And who suffers for that? The writer suffers, the show suffers, the other actor is like, what, you know, I can't get, do two lines at a time. No, no, you're, you're absolutely right. I was working with a young actor and they were doing some self tapes and I was telling them, you, you have to stop doing a hundred takes. You're never yes. going to get that opportunity to do that on set. You're not prepared for when you go on that set for the first time. If you're inexperienced and now you have two takes to do this, what are you going to do when you just did a hundred takes to do your self tape? It's not going to work. No, right. it isn't. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. It's true, I, and uh, it's like also um, in the voiceover world, you know, they don't want, they want to hear it all the way through. They don't want you cutting and redoing it. Yeah, yeah. Same principle. Sure. You sure. know, yeah. And, and it feels like people are losing that spontaneity, understanding how to work a room like yeah. you. No actor, I think, that of this young generation would even have the guts to pick up the phone to do something like that because they don't know how to perform in front of people. They're, they're paralyzed. No, they don't know what it is to win the room. And, um, and then with live television, oh, they yeah. had to go to the theater. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was no stopping. There was... Yeah, that's yeah, right. Pressure was on. Really? No retakes there. You know, it's funny, too. It's almost... It's gone hand in hand, if I think about it, that the whole, you know, the kids... Growing up, all my grandkids, anyway, you know, are like this uh, with oh, yeah. their phone and their stuff, and their, um, uh, and so in a funny way, it's the same in the business. In other yeah. words, the or whole, micro, yeah, micro and magic. and you wonder, is this just the shift of what happens when you grow older and you want to say, you know, it ain't what it used to be. You know what I mean? I've heard my grandparents say that. You yeah. know. And it isn't. But it, <laughs> it's, that's the truth. Yeah, but, but to, maybe bring it that's... To, to bring it to present day, it's the reason why we have to get more young people to come to the theater yeah. to realize, oh, look, they're yeah. not stopping. There's light. They're telling a story. Yeah. 
and you can see the whole body do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, not yeah, just, absolutely. not just, you know. A talking head. You know, yeah. And yeah. some people who don't come from the theater and then do the theater, you know, maybe a, a big name who mm -hmm. is a film star or whatever and comes, does it limited a run or. Yes. You, you can tell sometimes the lack of ability to have everything you're doing in the, in the moment, like a real whole person. You, you can still see them in close up mm. because nothing else is working. You know, it's, it's the weirdest thing. Yeah, is that well, a terrible thing to say? About? No, but no. I didn't name anybody. But, no, <laughs> but it's no. the reason why, um, you know, they yeah. get mic'd. Yes. A theater oh. like this, we were never been mic'd no. years ago. And th that was a pride thing because you learned how to project. Yeah, you learned how to you whisper know, on here. stage yeah. in a back row hit. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. It's all part of your craft. You mentioned earlier about amphitheaters and how they used to do it years ago oh, in Greece right? and Sicily. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And that, 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 they that's were able right. to reach the end of the, yeah, yeah based that on that the acoustics. Amazing? Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of fun, but it's not a, it's not a. Uh, well, it was a craft. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's not a craft that's so necessary yeah, anymore. Yeah. So it's, you know, they're falling off one by one. <laughs> yeah. Things you were able to do. Yeah, because, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, that was, uh, yeah. I remember saying to Jack Klugman one night, we, we walked off stage, I said, we were good tonight. And he went, we're always good. That's not what it's about. And I realized, you know, he's right. It, on the worst night, you know, we have the flu or something <laughs> like that. We're going to give the audience their money's worth because we know our craft. Yeah. But what it's really about is hitting those magic nights. Yeah. You know, you can do a play. I mean, I did Lombardi 286 performances with Judas Light. And like Jack said, we were always good. And not, even when we had the flu, we were great. But there were those magic nights. Yeah. Reminds me of uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So yeah. because you had to perform and there was no cut and retake and editing, you were able to perform. And still to this day, it made you a stronger actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and you yeah. learn how to uh, do it in the you know in the moment. You, and if you if something horrible does happen, yeah. you learn how to f fudge it. You know, and so, <laughs> fix it in some way, or or you oh. work with somebody who's you know more yeah. alert than you are. And yeah. they can help you. <laughs> or you, you know? work with somebody like Charlie <laughs> Durning. He used to pray for things to go wrong, so <laughs> he could fix it. Oh yeah, he goes, yeah, it's more fun. Yeah, you know, yeah, and everyone your heart starts to pound. Right, out and of then your... every sometimes something would go wrong, and you got out of it, and you'd hear the director or the keep that, yeah. put it back in, yeah, yeah. make sure you do that tomorrow night. Yeah, again. and a lot of things happen that way. Tommy Kale was like that as a director with Judith Light. He was the best director I worked with, I think, and I worked with some good stage directors. But Tommy was, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he directed Lombardi. He would, he would use especially the. Uh, the previews, he would always say, don't get locked in yet. Don't get locked in. Keep trying. Keep trying. And then I guess you eventually you did what he really wanted you to do, and he would go, keep that one. But he had a way of making you feel you were playing. And then every once in a while you found something you knew he didn't think of, you didn't think of. It just happened in front of an audience. Hmm. And he'd go, keep that. I don't know what you did, but keep it. That's a true creative process, the yeah. improvisa yeah. improvisation. Yeah. yeah. You got to get to the point where – on stage you're so relaxed and uh, you know i don't see the young kids even striving to get that because they really haven't come from this theater sure. not all you know there's still always this son yeah so when you talk about that we talk about how important it is to save the theater bring back the theater make sure people are not going to lose this beautiful art form now you play it's fantastic you're out at the 555 we're trying to get things like this in here next What's the process for people that don't understand how the theater works? For somebody, again, like I said, you start at a different place, you get reviews, you bring it back. What's the process of getting a play off the ground? For somebody who has no idea how that would work outside the TV or film world, how does that whole process work? Oh. Yeah, well, no. the first thing to do is get, <laughs> a group of in, yeah, no, get a group of <laughs> actors together and read it and yep. uh, you know go rent a theater and read it for an audience and listen to the reaction. Don't just sit there and go, oh, that's my play up there. <laughs> listen, sit in the back, watch the reaction of the audience. And then you try to submit it to regional mm -hmm. theaters. There's some that still do new plays, you know, New Jersey Rep, Shadowland, uh, uh, Great Barrington Public Theater. They focus on new plays. And they're always looking for stuff. And, of course, if you can get a celebrity to commit to going. Yeah, that helps. Yeah. Uh, 
I just got two good friends, uh, Richard Kind and James Pickens, to go to a little theater in New Jersey to work on a new play by Michael Tucker. And it was oh. a big hit. They extended it three times. That theater is going to survive yeah. for a year Love because you. of that. Yes. And if celebrities, I always say, if you'll help a young writer and go home, bring it home. Lou, Lou Diamond Phillips was great. He went. Uh, he wrote a play called Burning Desire, which was very funny, where he played the devil. And he went to Texas, his hometown, and he did the play. It helped the regional theater. And then he went up to um, Seven Angels in Waterbury, Connecticut. And it was a big hit there. Mm. And, you know, but Lou's one of those guys. Yeah, let's, I don't care. I'm more, he's already a star. What do you yeah, think? Brian, yeah. Brian Cranston's like that. He'll, he, he'll think, do any new play. You know? I think it, it would help, too, you know, if, if, if theater wasn't, uh, well, off-Broadway is less money to go yeah, see, so but it would really help if, if, if they could, you know, Lower cheapen it up a, a little bit because families, you know, want to come to the theater in New York, at least I know. And, you know, they have to get a babysitter. They have to either drive in, or park, train. Yeah. eat dinner, yeah. and then pay, you know, $300 a ticket for $1, something. $1, and, uh, and if they have two kids that want to see a big, one, you know, yeah, big show. Lion King. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, I, it's just so much money. And uh, I don't know how to fix that. No. Do you? No. <laughs> Anybody yeah. out there that has an idea, Any please ideas. Uh, leave a comment. PBS. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, some kind of subsidy for the theater. Wouldn't that be nice? And, that, and business-wise, and this is, because uh, I go around the country talking about developing theater. We started, Wendy Malik and I started the, Durango Play Festival, and that, but we've convinced the people there that even though the theater makes no money, everything around it makes money. That's true. If you're, no one wants to live next to a sporting arena, mm. but you build beautiful condos around an art center, they go like that. Sure. Nobody says, let's go eat before a ball game, but they all eat before the theater or the ballet or the symphony. So everything, business-wise, a theater community, a, a community built around theater is going to be very profitable. It's that, it, it, I'm going to make a funny expression now again, but it, it's that trickle-down thing. Sure. It sure. really yeah, is true. Is. Absolutely. <laughs> you yes. know? And, uh, yeah, and you're right. That's, that's absolutely, it brings everything up. Yes. Yep. Yes. And the more we get, uh, the kids are getting on those phones. Yeah. And, isolating themselves, yeah. the more important seeing a live event is going to be. you got to remember, the theater is our oral history. Mm. You know, if, uh, I, I hate to say this, but the war that's on in the Ukraine right now, a hundred years from now, and I'm saying this as a Vietnam vet, a hundred years from now, that war is going to be one sentence in a, unless... Mm somebody writes a great play like All My Sons. Yeah, yeah. And then 100 years from now, that play will go on, and some kid will go, when was there a war there? And then we become the oral history. Mm. Then the grandfather will say, yeah, I remember when I was your age, oh, I had an aunt over there, or my neighbors you know, had a cousin there, and they came to live here. It's horrible. Then the oral history will continue. But if there's no play, you can have good documentaries, but they'll get bare. But if something you see something live, it stimulates that creative process of why can I write about that? Where was that? Look at those characters. Look at those people. Well, you're sharing the same time frame, too, in life. And, you know, that thing about the uh, right time, right place, right, right. action. Yeah. You know, all that. You know, it, it, it's important. I mean, it changes us, you know. Yeah. It Im so improves get... us sometimes and dozens other times. Yeah. But, you know, it's, uh, it's you can't compare an actual living experience. That's that's why when we were saying earlier where, where you... Uh, think of something, you know, two people thinking of that same thing make, can have a better shot of it happening. Yeah. Yes. It, you know, if you sit there by yourself, it's not as good. You, but you, you get two people together, you got something. 100%. <laughs> yeah. You, you yeah. want to have some fun? I made my 18-year-old godson, you know, who's a computer nerd, like old. <laughs> I made him watch two episodes of All in the Family. Oh, yeah. For the... 
first 20 minutes goes, you can't say that. Oh, That's terrible. Say, yeah. <laughs> what are you making me watch? And then he yes. got it. He went, they're making fun of him. And nice. I said, yes, yeah. it's called satirical humor. You wouldn't know about that because you're too busy. On... Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he couldn't wait to watch the second one. Huh. And the first thing he said was, why don't we do that today? He said, you're not allowed to. Oh. Yeah. It, it's, it's really scary. I mean, how do you guys feel about that, especially with getting the arts alive? We're in a cancel culture right now. Yeah. Where if you do something like a satire, you may find yourself in very dangerous waters at this point. I right, know. and that swings both ways it's because now bad. there are some plays being done only because they are politically correct, but they're not good plays. Mm -hmm. yes. Then you go the other way and, oh, I can't say it. And, and your court, we're looking at everything except the actual play itself, the writing of the play. Mm. If it's well written, like Charles Turney would always say, the worst night of your life is sitting through a bad play. <laughs> you just sit there, why? I'll, I'll never get this time back. <laughs> and he says, and the best night of your life yeah. is sitting through a great play because you will remember it for the rest of your life. Mm. And for those of us who saw you know, a chorus line, mm. or like Charlie and Championship Season, mm. that cast, that was mm. original product. You never forget that as long as you live. Mm. You know? Yeah. I really like what you're saying about the theater, because I, I always say movies, they have all these like superhero movies, yeah. and maybe the comic book that the parent read, they're going to take their child there to have the experience of what they experience, but... I like what you're saying, that you document the history with a play, oh. and then the family comes to the play, and then you support the surrounding community yeah. with stores and, and creating employment, and it, it's just a win-win. Yeah. yeah. Well, twice, women in film have given me the, uh, an award because I've always been promoting, we need a woman's studio that only makes movies about real women heroes. Mm. Oh, yeah, wow. They'll do Wonder Woman, which is you know a cheerleader with a boobs hanging out. At the end, the man saves the world. But they will not. Do you know who Dr. Mary Edwards Walker is? I'd be shocked if you did. I'd be shocked if 98% of the women in the country don't know who she is. She's the only woman to receive the Medal of Honor. Oh, wow. You could not believe her story. If I told you now, you go, my God, they never made a movie? Yet? No. Mm -hmm. You know who Elizabeth Keckley is? She's the black woman that... Abraham Lincoln moved into the White House before he signed the Emancipation Proclamation that saved his wife's life. No movie about her. Molly B. Dam, ever hear of her? It's a 10-foot statue to her, Murray, Idaho. It says the hooker with the heart of gold. <laughs> the original. Yeah, yeah, from Molly B. Dam. It's a great story. The only movie she's in is McCabe and Mrs. Miller, and you don't realize it's Molly until the last line. So it's not about Molly. Huh. It sounds to me like you need to make some movies. Yeah, no, it it's, no, and that's screenplays. No, at least. that's my point. <laughs> the women, if they wait for men to do it, forget it. Yeah. There should be a group of. Uh, there are a lot of really fine actresses out there right now that have their own production company. They yeah. should get together, and form that, and buy their own streaming service, and make so young girls can mm. see that his be the oral history, yeah. and there should be plays about these people too. I don't know. We're not pushed to that. We're pushed to the sensationalism. Well, they also or... and they also have to, you know, get a a go. Yeah. You know, they may have the ideas. They may well, be in there pitching them. You know, but they may not get it. Yeah, go but ahead. if they wait for the men, they're not going to get. It. <laughs> you know, they'll do another cheerleader in a costume with a sword banging on things. Well, isn't there a TV show called Chosen, which is funded by people? So maybe they could do something like that. Wow. No, no, you're right. What's incredible now is if you have the fan base and you have the reach, right. you could use things. That's, that's, you know, kind of vice versa, right? You take the internet, the influencer culture. There's a lot of negatives to it. But at the same time, there are some positives. If they did have a reach out there, they get a fan base to self-fund or find these kind of ways to get yeah, things out we're, there. We're, we're in this crazy world where everybody can make a movie. which Because you got your team. Yeah. And the worst thing about that is... Everybody can make a move. <laughs> you know, I did Mario Van Peoples' first movie when he, he was trying. It was his first thing he ever tried. We had to rob his father's camera on the weekend. The actors had to pay the guy, the driver with the generator truck. We had to run the cable down ourselves, do a scene. I remember we were doing this scene, and there was a, a white boat behind us, and we're doing a scene. We couldn't get it finished. So the next week we went back, 
and the boat was blue. <laughs> <laughs> they painted the boat. I said, no, it's a different boat. So we had to have a guy hold up a white board behind oh, no. him. <laughs> but the point was, there were only 20 independent movies made that yes. year. They were in, he was in every festival. And he, his career is, and he's a very good director, his career started that. But there were 1,200 independent movies submitted to the Toronto Film Festival. Yeah. So God knows what little gem is not seen. Yes. Right? Can you say more about the, uh, it's stuck in my head, uh, cho Chosen. The Chosen, yeah, it's a and TV show. The, it's a, it's a religious, it's, re it's about Jesus. Oh, okay. It's a, it's, Which, I mean, what... Uh, um, I'm not sure what channel Chosen like is on. Netflix I or, forgot. It's streaming, I believe, on Amazon and other services, it is, but yes, it's completely yes. funded by funded. the fans and the people that support the show. Oh, okay. They completely did it independently on their wow. own and kind of yeah. got their like own distribution see, deals. If you see the website, you see the, like, the dollars clucking up. They really made it nice. The yeah. presentation's really... If you make a good presentation, I believe you get the people to fund. Imagine. Yeah. That's well, I think the, the women <laughs> ought to, we ought to have a channel that, or a studio that uh -huh. makes movies about real woman heroes, it not comic book stuff, not cut, cut, cut. Re yeah, real dialogue. Maybe real Reese story. Witherspoon would save Reese us all. <laughs> that woman Stimson in, uh, oh. you know, oh. the one in, uh, uh, I believe her name is, it's in Soil Dubs of the West. This very wealthy woman, I think her name was Stimson, in 1875, something like that. She walks out of her mansion in San Francisco and finds this little Chinese girl in the bushes. And she finds out that the Chinese that were brought over here to work on the railroads, they literally would sell their youngest daughter into prostitution in order to survive. And when the, these little girls eventually got syphilis, they were killed. So she goes into San Francisco, finds this woman, Delgado, uh, uh, from Mexico, who has a little center for these girls. Huh. And between the two of them, they had the laws changed in California. And during a protest march, a member of a Thong gang, an Asian gang, came out with a machete and chopped her arm off, this woman Stimson, and she gave her speech in Congress with this stuff. Wow. And it changed the laws on how these children were treated. Now, you tell me that's not a movie. Yeah. Tell me an actress yeah. that wouldn't want to play that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Two actresses. The woman who started the thing. I mean, what great roles. Mm -hmm. And talk about different minorities. You have the young Asian uh, coming over. You have this mm -hmm. uh, Mexican woman. You have this uh, elite uh, noble. Well, I don't want to say noble, but this elite, uh, what's the word? Upscale. I'm, upscale. <laughs> yes, yeah. You know, high yeah. society yeah. woman. And all this would be in the same movie. Uh, yeah. And, and and the other stories I mean, uh, Dr. Mary Edwards walking on they they're even better stories. Sure. You have to look at them. Mm. You know, Dan, I, I feel like if, like you said, if they had their own streaming service, if there was a output point don't for this for type. No, no, absolutely right. You can't wait for anybody nowadays. You have to get out there and make it yourself. And if the right. service did exist, there are definitely, I think you, there is a fan base, there's an audience that is built in for this. You just need the right people to yeah, get well, behind the, it. The argument you're going to get or I get it is, well, they'll never buy it. <laughs> No shit. <laughs> I know that. Yeah, yeah. Why are you waiting for them to buy it? So right, maybe, right. So maybe his, you know, his thing about the chosen, you know, would maybe the people well, thinking of the maybe. women's chamber of commerce, and maybe you joining that, and uh, you know, spearheading this. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I like the idea. Of course. Right. <laughs> no. Uh, we'll we'll talk about it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Chris is volunteering you for this position I, now, I, so that that's thank great. You. So that's right. that's fantastic. But really. Everything you two are doing, again, you're you're caring about the craft, the the, the business itself, the love behind the arts. Mm -hmm. Just radiates from the both of you. It's so special having Thanks. people like you on this show, really, because that's lost nowadays. Everybody out there, what you two bring to the world is so incredible. Really, it, it's it's an yeah. honor. Oh, that's yeah. We're passing. You got to come see us. Yeah, right. <laughs> can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait. Yeah. But we're passing a baton on to. I know, I think so. I feel like you guys yeah. care about this. Yeah, really. What I feel about you know, the podcast is, you know, just like in movies and plays, you're telling stories. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now we're having you tell your story. 
And so this message of what you're saying, maybe it's going to reach the audience and maybe there will be some other woman out there who will spearhead yes. this. Oh, yeah. I hope some young girl says, yeah. Dr. Mary Evans Walker, I want to read about her. Yeah. And then writes a screenplay. Yeah, yeah. Really. Or a miniseries would be even better. Yeah. No, no, ab absolutely. And and talking about great people again, we have to thank everybody at the Five 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 Theater. Thanking, talking about friends and mentors that are out there. My dear friend and mentor, Frank M. Calla, who connected us with you guys. Thank you so much, Frank, for letting yeah. us who come on to the show. It was fantastic. Thank yeah. you to Five 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 Theater for. You admit to knowing Frank. I I <laughs> proudly admit to knowing. <laughs> no, he's a man. Best, right? He's a great guy. Really, he's there's nothing but great things about the two of you. Yeah. So Aww. I'm so thankful for him connecting us and getting us together with this. Really, everything you guys are doing is fantastic. You're going to be changing the world with your play. We can't come wait to come out and support. So when it does get going, yeah, we yeah. would love to come out, do this again with you guys, Great. showcase you guys as much as possible. We'd love to have you back on. And any nice. other, you know, anyone involved with the play, we'd love to have on and get, get yeah, going. Maybe, Thanks, Chuck. Maybe we can do a performance where we can get some young kids and young writers to come in. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, anything we can do to support you guys yeah. okay. would really be fantastic. We, we adore having you two on. This yeah. is thank really you. fantastic. Again, everybody, thank you so so much for the Live Your Dreams podcast. I'm Joe Gowalis. Chris Victor. Dan Loria, Patty McCormick, everybody. This has been a fantastic show. Really, get it out there. We cannot wait. Again, thank you to all of our sponsors. Again, also the 555 Theater, Frank Callow. Thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in this week. We'll see you all next week. And we're off to South by Southwest, Chris. So That's let's right. have a good time. Let's do it. All right. Thanks, everybody.